Hello and welcome to the channel. Now, recently the RSPB announced that a small colony of bee eaters has returned to the coastal town of Cromer in the UK. These birds are native to Africa and Southern Europe, so to see them in the UK is quite something. They claim to have set up an area which is safe to observe the birds without disturbing them, so I grabbed my camera gear and headed straight down there, and I'll show you the results. Welcome to the picturesque landscape of the UK. With its open grasslands and densely packed trees, it provides a haven for wildlife. An abundance of rainwater collected in lakes and rivers is the beating heart of this green and vibrant landscape. But as our climate gets warmer, we're starting to see visitors from further afield. So today, I'm heading to the Norfolk coast for a chance at seeing a bee eater for the first time. If you're like me and you live in the UK, then you're never actually more than 70 miles from a coastline. Today, I'll be traveling from the city where I live in a northeast direction, up to Cromer, or more specifically, a place called Trimmingham. These somewhat exotic birds have chosen a disused quarry in a small village as their nesting site. When nesting, the birds will dig a burrow into a sandy bank, so the quarry kind of fits the bill. The weather's looking promising and the roads are getting narrow, so we must be getting near. So we have just arrived at the RSPB Bee Eaters site. Um, I say site, it's a tent in a field. Um, there is a five pound admission fee as well, which I, I guess is okay. The gentleman explains it's because it's private land, so they actually have to pay for usage of the land. So interesting to find out where that money goes. It'd be, um, be quite an interesting conversation topic, I imagine. But yeah, we've arrived. There's a few people down the bottom. Apparently they were here this morning, but haven't been seen since, so. I'm hopeful. It's really windy, which is why I've got this. So this is the small rig. Um, I'm not sure which tripod, I'll find out for you and put the, a link underneath. But this is a small rig tripod and it's a big heavy one um, to stop the wind from shaking the camera, hopefully. It's pretty windy though, so it's gonna put it to the test. But we'll find out. So today I've got the Sigma 150 to 600. Um, this one's a sport, so it's a bit heavier than the contemporary, but if I was honest, the only difference that I found is that the Sport has a, a smaller minimal focal range so you can do some macro stuff on it. Um, so if that's not something that interests you, the Contemporary is another option. Then I've got the FX30 with me and I also have the R4 for taking photos. So I'm going to try and do both. But from the photos and video I've seen online, these are really far away. So I'm thinking the FX30 is probably going to be the winner with a crop sensor. And then if I put it into 100 frames, I can crop even further because if they're really far away, it's going to be tough to get a good shot of them. But here's hoping. Now, as a non-native UK species, I don't actually know much about the bee eaters. I'm not sure on their flight patterns or what to look for as signs where they might be. So I headed over to the main group and started asking if anybody had seen them and if they had any advice. The people around were fairly friendly and seemed to know roughly where the birds would be coming from. So I set up my camera and had to make my tripod super high to get over these bushes.
I was set up for about an hour, maybe two, and we were starting to get bored of waiting. But it is the wildlife game to stand around and wait. Then suddenly everyone started moving. Oh, I got something. So we've been told that there are bee eaters on the power lines, which are about probably a half a mile that way. Um, so I am struggling right now to get them. So still searching for them. Hopefully I'll find something in post. I know they're on the power line, so that's making it easy to focus because I just focus on the power line and follow it along. It's a really horrible feeling when everyone around you can see what you're supposed to be looking at, but you still haven't been able to find it. Have they still got it? Oh, we're having a moment. So I have it in frame. I've had to go to 100 frames and now I've just moved the camera. I've had to go to 100 frames to get it because I can't see it too well. It's cool. That's really colourful. Let's lock this off. Make sure I'm recording. And play with the phone. That tiny little speck in the centre of the screen is a Eurasian bee eater. And this is how far away it was from me. Though they were far away, I did manage to see this food path. It's actually the first ever food path I've seen from any bird species. It was really cool that it happened to be with these ones. Then as quickly as they appeared, they were gone. They flew off into the fields and they didn't come back. So I turned my attention to whatever wildlife I could find on the same location. There wasn't a lot, but enough to keep me busy for another half an hour. We are going to get lunch because the storm clouds are coming over and it looks like it's going to rain. So we're going to head into Chroma and get something to eat. But we've seen them, so mission accomplished. Oh, here comes the rain. What's that for timing? Oh. Growing up in a city far away from the coast, I'll take every opportunity I can to get a glimpse of the waves. So, as soon as lunch is done, we're heading to the beach. After driving through the rain, it seemed to stop immediately as soon as we got to Chroma, and we were greeted by a kestrel. Not a bad start. As we navigated our way down the cliffside, I managed to spot a seal, and then it disappeared under the waves and I didn't see it again. I headed down to the beach anyway, and sat down, and just took it all in. In times like this, I like to reflect on why I started my wildlife journey in the first place. And it's simply for peace away from a busy life. I'm pretty sure I found it on this trip. If you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe because I'll have more episodes of the climate series coming up soon. Thanks for joining me on this journey.